Hi, my name is Dr. Steve Davis and I'm the Director of Faculty Development at Ohio University College of Osteopathic Medicine and the core centers of osteopathic research and education. And I'm going to walk you through an exercise I'm calling the effective preceptor. And in order to do this exercise, you're going to need a piece of paper, and you're going to need the notes that are available online, and you're going to need to uh, prepare yourself to take some notes. What I would like to do in the next few minutes is cover three keys to effective precepting. We often hire preceptors and we set expectations for them, but we don't give them the skills and tools to do what we're asking them to do. So this should help. And what I would like to do is identify best practices for you to consider and also look at the literature and what it says about these three things. So without further ado, I'd like to say that the three keys to effective precepting this is on the basic level is orientation, teaching, and feedback. So what I'm going to do over the next couple of minutes is walk through those three topics, orientation, teaching, and feedback in a special kind of way. And what I would like to do first is to have you stop the tape and think in your mind about the best orientation that you've ever had from somewhere you've been and write down what made it good. And number two, while you're doing that, when you get done with that activity, take a second moment and think about what you do for orientation, how you work that, and write down your best practices. So right there you have two ways to think about orientation, and if you don't do orientation, that's fine. That's what this is for, to help you get started, because that is a very important piece of being an effective preceptor. Now that you've done that, what I would like to do is show you what the literature says. So I've read through many, many pamphlets about preceptor education, and we've boiled them down to these three important topics. And I've set it up on kind of a checklist format because I just finished a book by Atul Gawande called The Checklist Manifesto. And he talks about how it's pretty overwhelming to remember everything that we need to do in medicine and the technology is huge. So I wanted to try to put it in a format that's easier to use. So take a look at the checklist. And then after you've done that, I would like you to identify at least one or two things that you don't do that you will try to do later. Now typically when I'm in a seminar, I'll ask the participants to share this with other people, but in this venue, you'll need to just try and do these things. So what you're doing is making a promise to yourself that you're going to start doing a better orientation, a very important part of precepting, probably one of the most important parts. Once you've done a good orientation, then I introduce the topic of teaching. Teaching is the, really the work that you do with the student. And what I'm going to do with teaching is the same thing I did with orientation and the same thing we're going to do with feedback. I would like you to stop the tape and think about the best teaching you've ever received and try to identify why you would say that's the best. Write it down. And the second part of that is actually your teaching. What is your best practice? Identify that best practice so that you can codify it put it on paper, and perhaps improve it in the future. Okay, now let's took a, take a look at what the literature says about the teaching recommendations. And there are some things on this list that I would like to highlight. Uh, number one is role modeling. You see that as a third item down. And typically when I go and observe a preceptor, they forget to do this thing called think out loud. They just automatically know what they know and they say it to the student without telling the student or teaching the student about how they know that. So that's a really key part of what I think makes for good teaching. So now we come to the part where you are going to commit 
to a new best practice for you based on what you thought of, your best practices, and what the literature says. Please identify one or two things that you're going to do to be a better teacher as a preceptor. Finally, we get to the third point. We talked about orientation. We talked about teaching. Again, these are the basics of precepting, and this is what all good preceptors do. So we're trying to give you some tools so that you can improve your precepting. And we're going to do the same exercise with feedback. I want you to close your eyes, concentrate, and think about the best feedback you've ever received from someone and write down what was going on and what the feedback was like and how that worked because you're going to want to try to emulate that yourself and secondly I'd like you to take a moment and say what you do what's your best practice with feedback and then finally we'll take a look at the literature and see what that says Okay, the last part of this exercise then is to take a look at the literature and so I've condensed the literature down to a checklist again and I would like you to read through that checklist and make notes. Now one of the things that I think you can do with this exercise is begin to think about how you would formulate a checklist for these three items, orientation, teaching, and feedback. And the idea is that in order to be consistent and be a good preceptor and not forget things, you can use your own checklist. All right, um, we've gone through these exercises and really one way to finish is just to summarize what we've done. So what we did was we looked at the three keys to effective precepting. Based upon all the literature that I have, it boils down to a good orientation, good teaching, and excellent feedback. And what I want to say is that you are the expert you are the one that meets these students in their office and I want to encourage you to take this lesson to heart and use the principles that you've learned to be the best preceptor you can be. One of the worst things in the world is to watch yourself on video. I hope I never have to watch this. <laughs>